Hello, I'm Martha Glenny, Jewelry Professor at George Brown College in Toronto. My videos look at different jewelry forms, items. I'm offering tips, tools, and suggestions that work for me. Here we are at the, at the lathe with our little faceted dome and we have to decide what are we going to do? How are we going to approach polishing each and every one of those faces as an individual unit? And really, um, I think you know that we've got two choices, right? We've got the lap and that would be the rock hard lap and we have a wheel buff and that would be a hard wheel buff. Before attempting to do a form like this, I might suggest that you uh, go back to a video that I did that looks at just doing flat sheets. Because I talk a lot more about the difference between laps, uh, how they come, how you can buy them, and in general, using laps. So we're going to shortcut it a little bit and assume that you've watched that one. Get this on. Now, what would be Martha's choice? Okay. Maybe on a good day, this would be my choice. On a regular day, this would be my choice. What does that mean, on a good day and on a regular day? Well, on a day that I could confidently and accurately put these each little individual face down on here that would be a good day wouldn't it um, I'm gonna give it a try and see because of course the best tool is the lap we're doing flat surfaces we've got a flat surface if however we're making a mess of our symmetry because we can't get that down flat then that's not a great choice and that we would be better to go to the other one so we'll see how things are going today all right now I'm gonna ha I, I need to shift myself a little bit over here because I'm not going to slide this on like I did with my flat sheet I'm thinking more, I'm going to come in here where I can see it and I can rest it down. And by the way, ow, by the way, don't do that. <laughs> but also, this is really thin material um, and it gets really hot. So don't put your finger right under where, the, uh, the, where you're polishing. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This is the uh, Gray Star, by the way. Well, maybe this is a good day. You know, it's really nice when sometimes you impress yourself, eh? That feels good. Really, really we can say to ourselves, wow, I'm really acquiring some skill here. Whoa, that was not good. That was not good. It leaned out. Or rather, it didn't do it. I leaned it one way at the one side. Okay, I'm just going to do the other square. And then I'm going to stop there. Um, because I don't think I'll be able... These big squares, you know, to get them on flat is a lot easier than uh, the small space, the small forms. And there we go. We're going to take this off 
and we are going to put our hard wheel buff on and I'll talk to you a little bit about how that works. But you know what? <clears throat> I cut myself on the edge of the lap. So I'm going to take a short break and wash that up and get a bandage on it. Okay, I'm back. I, uh, as you can see, look at these lovely clean fingers. <laughs> I went and had a good uh, wash and, you know, you really have to make sure you get the uh, compound out if you've cut yourself or it's really more like a brush burn than a, than a cut. And I've got a bandage on it and, you know, we're goldsmiths. We're going to be, uh, be concerned about our health, but you know what? We don't stop. We keep going. So we're going to keep going and get a really nice result on this faceted dome. Okay, now I have to remember where I was. All right, yes, I was doing those big faces on the lap, and now I've come to my hard wheel buff. This happens to be um, a luster bar uh, wheel buff, so I'll make sure to use the luster bar. And let's give this a go. Actually, nope, we're gonna stop for a moment. What I want to say is this is where it's absolutely crucial that you bring the piece flat to the buff, each face, and take it away. And think about them as individual units, okay? Pay special, special attention to that. So, Let's see, my lap lines are going this way. So to be helpful, I'm gonna go across those lines. Okay, so I thought I could jump uh, to luster bar. And if we remember, uh, luster bar is sort of halfway, somewhere in between uh, Rouge and Tripoli and Graystar. But I could tell with just that little bit of work that that was too big a jump. It was asking too much. So I need to go back and get my Tripoli buff and we'll go from there. Here we are. I've got a nice little shelf under my polishing bench. And again, this is one of the treated ones and it's very firm. So that's a good choice. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, but now it's down here. It's, I sanded it so flat <laughs> that I can't pick it up. There we go. Now, which face was it that I was working on? Here it is, this one. Maybe you're um, asking yourself, well, how do I know that that's not doing a good job? Well, as I look at this face, I can see that I'm getting tiny little drag marks from the coarser lines of the lap. The luster bar wasn't cutting through them. It was just dragging them out. And that's why I've gone back to Tripoli. That's going to do the trick. I'm not pressing very hard. Um, when we're doing nice big convex forms like you saw, in uh, a couple of the other videos, you could press quite hard and really uh, make some aggressive work. We don't want to work that way on this form. We want to be fairly delicate. Obviously it has to touch the buff and the compound to do the job, but I don't want to press hard because I don't want to round the corners more than they're naturally going to get rounded. And I'm going to polish each face until all I see 
are Tripoli lines. You know, it's something so interesting about the theory of polishing, that the theory of polishing is so simple. You're replacing coarser lines with finer lines. And yet, the application of that theory is uh, not so simple. There's a lot of subtlety. And as always, when you see that it's not working, then you're gonna change, you're gonna add some compound. If it's getting too shiny, you can see how I use the light constantly. I tip it in the light to find the right light for me to be able to see the surface. And I am changing the orientation, working from different angles. That's coming along nicely. Again here on this piece, I would start with the uh, biggest faces, these big triangles, because they're gonna be the easiest and it's gonna give you a feel. So now I've done all four of those, I'm gonna do the intermediary ones. I am moving the piece side to side. You can see I'm not moving it this way. I am moving it this way. If I move it this way, I'm apt to roll over the edge and thin my material and make a rounded edge, which I definitely do not want to do. Just like with the filing and the sanding, we want to be precise and accurate and careful. So this kind of a form, it's going to take you longer uh, to polish and to buff, just like it'll take you longer to sand it, but the result is worth the wait. We won't do real time for this one. I think you've, uh, there's plenty of other videos where you've seen me do buffing. And what I would say is that I would take this harder wheel buff. We won't use for buffing, we won't use this soft one. We'll use the harder one in the same way. And then perhaps at the very end, when the buffing is all complete, if I want to get up a little higher luster, then maybe I might give it a quick hit with this one. But more important than having a few buffing lines is that we keep a nice crisp form. And through the magic of video, I happen to have a buffed piece right here. And I think you can clearly see the difference in the luster, whereas this one is much more highly reflective and it has that kind of deeper color to it and um, this was achieved by using a harder wheel buff and a, if you can't get rid of the lines the buffing lines on your um, harder rouge buff then just make them go in the same direction okay they'll be a lot less visible if you have everything going in the same direction so that's it for today. A challenging form. Find something like it and give it a try. I'll see you next time.